When graduates are applying to both medicine and dentistry in the UK, they face a very unique set of challenges. I always say it's a triple, quadruple whammy for them because not only is it incredibly competitive, it's about 34 applicants to one space for graduate entry medicine, also it's completely shrouded in mystery. It is very confusing. Some people don't know what the entry requirements are for one university, whether you're applying to the five year course or the four year course, there can be different entry requirements and then that spans across all the different universities add that to the fact that you have no help and no support from a uh, careers advisor that you usually get when you're applying if you're coming from sixth form so that combined just makes it a really challenging task so I must say that my heart always does go out to graduates but not only that your UCAT score every element of your med school application really the five key cornerstones of a strong grounded application which I talk about in this video need to all be absolutely on point everything from your graduate level degree to your UCAT score which is what we're going to talk about here one question I get asked a lot about grads taking the UCAT is, is it different or are there any modifications? The answer is no, it is exactly the same as the one that you may have took when you attempted to apply as an undergrad. Maybe you have no idea what it's like at all, but either way, if you have sat it in the past, it has undergone some changes and modifications over the years, so I would make sure that you're using a resource that is gonna keep you up to date. Some people like books, but I'm personally against books because it is very different to the online way of doing it, and the exam is online, it's on a computer, so I believe, and in my experience of teaching people, whether they've used our resources or other resources, people have done better by doing an online resource. So I would always recommend using online resources. Something like this is going to help you have a baseline set of knowledge so that you can have the fundamentals of the techniques, the kind of questions that come up, how to be speedy and accurate, which is the key to scoring highly in the UCAT. I would recommend that you check out this video here where I kind of go through a really robust revision plan that's going to help you prepare to get a 3000 plus score. But just because the UCAT is the same for both graduates as it is for undergraduates, don't be fooled into thinking that you need the same score. The cutoff is very different for graduates. To give you an example, St George's University in London last year required a 2710 as their cutoff point to consider inviting people to interview. That was for the undergrads, whereas the grads required a 2810 to be considered for interview and therefore or be offered a place. Then if we take another London University, Queen Mary's, the lowest score that somebody got in on the undergrad course this year was with a 2360. Pretty low, quite significantly below average. However, when you look at the graduates, if you had a first class degree, you needed a minimum of 2820 to be considered to, to meet the threshold. However, get this, if you had a 2-1, the minimum cutoff score was 3,210. Now, Queen Mary is a very unique example because it's quite a small medical school and an even smaller grad cohort. However, this is why I say for most universities, for all of my grads that I teach on my one-on-one -on -one course, we are aiming for a 3,000 because that is how we take control of this application. Even Newcastle, which is one of the most demanding uh, UCAT requirement in terms of application, they have a really high one for undergraduates of about 2,810, very similar to other ones we've discussed. But for graduates, it's 2,920 in that region most years. And again, you know, if we get a 3000, that means that we open ourselves up to most universities. Okay, Queen Mary might be the one that we have to push a little bit more, but these are the kind of scores that we need to be aiming for to be in with a shot, which is why you hear me say very often, Forget about decils if you're a grad, you really need to be aiming for the highest score you possibly can. Now, you're probably thinking, oh great, well so how do I go ahead and get that? And I don't want this video to stress you out, I want it to help you understand the reality of how much work, if you're a grad, you're going to need to put in to be in with a realistic shot of getting a chance. Now. On our program, on the Future Doc program, we've had people you know, get only just above average as grads and applying, and we still managed to get them in, but you know, it depends if you want to take control of the application and you have a specific university in mind, and in that case, you really need to, like I say, be aiming for the highest possible. The other thing that people make the mistake a lot about with grads is that they think that when you apply to a five-year course, you are competing with 
other um, people who are maybe A-level takers and people fresh out of school. What they miss is when you apply to a five-year course as a grad, they will allocate some of that cohort only to grads. So let's say it's a university that has 200 places and they allocate 10% to grads. You're not competing for the 200 places, you are competing for that 10%, so in this case, 20 places against all the other grad applicants that apply to that university. So this is where the mystery of should I apply to a four year versus a five year is kind of sometimes uh, misunderstood and misguided because uh, it really depends on a university by university basis because some places the five year will be more competitive because there are smaller numbers or for example there are similar numbers on the small cohort within the five year as there are on the whole four year course. However, more people might be applying to one than the other. So this is where it's really important to be intelligent about how you select your university. And a big part of our success at the On The Future Dark program is us really sitting down for hours with our students to make sure that they make intelligent decisions with their universities. Now, I've talked a lot about the importance of the scores and the importance of the selection, but I wanna show you how you're going to get the score that you need. Now, firstly, if you wanna check out the five key areas that I talk about that you need to basically smash every single one of to be in with a really good chance, check out this video here where I talk about exactly what you need to do in all those five areas. Otherwise, check out this playlist here where I give you my UCAT greatest hits, and really it's more of a directory to send you to other the playlist where you can get the information you need. Otherwise, check out that online course that I told you about, which is a really robust resource to give you everything you need to score highly. But otherwise, thank you for watching and best of luck with your UCAT.